Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. After this morning, I made up in my mind, I will not drown. No matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstances is, no matter what I'm going through, I will not drown in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother Earl, I finally learned how to jump in water and not drown. Not, not, not drown. All I got to do is stay close to him. Stay close to him, I'll be all right. Let's hear what the Lord, amen, has to say for us through our testimonies, amen, on the preach word, amen, on tonight. Father God, we thank you how you spoke to us on this morning, God. Now speak to us again, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, for all that you have done, God. We praise you for what you're getting ready to do, even on tonight, through every testimony tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Thank you for feeding our hearts and our minds and our spirits, God, on this morning. Let us grudgitate on it, God, all week long, God. Let it marinate in our heart and in our spirits. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, we thank you, God, for those that couldn't make it this morning, but they here on this evening, God, to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church, God. Now, bless us through every song that's going to be sung in the name of Jesus. And we will give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Let's worship saints.
God, I don't preach on Sunday nights, but the Lord gave me this standing here. So I'm going to preach what the Lord just put into my spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. If you watch me over here, I was writing stuff down right there. I want you to grab your Bibles. Go to Hebrews 11. Somebody needs to hear this tonight. I don't know who this is for, but you're going to get it tonight. Hallelujah. And let him that hath an ear hear what the Spirit would say to the church. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11, verse 13. Glory to God. The Bible said these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having, then seen, having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. Verse 15, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country. That is in heavenly. Yeah. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Yeah. For he hath prepared for them a city. Right. This is the thought that the Lord gave me. And I want you to get this deep down in your spirit. Egypt ain't it for me. Egypt ain't it for me. I'm going to say that again. Egypt ain't it for me. Look at somebody near you and just tell them Egypt ain't it for me. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Somebody in here is going to leave here free tonight. Hallelujah. No more looking back. No more wishing for yesterday. No more thinking on better days having gone by. But God's got something better for me. I hope you hear what I'm saying. There are people that only saw my day. But I'm going to get to see the manifestation of the power of God in this present age. They were in Egypt for 400 years. For many of those years, they were prospering. And God was blessing them and increasing them. At one point, there arose a Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. And he began to look upon the people of God as if they were a threat. And he said, wait a minute, they are stronger in number than we are. And it might be that when our enemies come to fight against us, that they will adjoin themselves to our enemies and they will fight with them and overthrow us. And so they begin to oppress the people of God. They begin to bring them into bondage because they were terrified to be overthrown. Because I want to tell you something. When, when, when men made uh, dynasties, uh, are in the midst of their downfall. They will always be terrified when God begins to touch his people to raise them up again. They will always be terrified of the blessing of the Lord on the people of God as God begins to move them and so they will begin to oppress them. It is the same way for you who have come out of the world. You've never been a part of religious organization, but you have been a part of the dynasty of the enemy. You have been a part of sin and iniquity, and you have found yourself in the strongholds of the enemy's clutches, and you see yourself as you are, and somewhere down that line, you find yourself coming into a church, and you hear a message preached, or you find yourself running into somebody on the street whose mouth is full of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and God begins to deliver you from the dynasty of the enemy. Either way, saints of God, the enemy is always going to come with oppression. If you ever notice, the closer you get to your destiny, the greater the attack of the enemy becomes on your life because he is terrified for you to overthrow what he has spent millennials trying to build up. But I'm telling you, there are better days for us. Hallelujah. And I want to I want you to understand that this is not coming from me as an original statement, but there are saints of God who have gone on before us who did not get to see the day that this church is coming into. But my God, they saw it in the spirit and they confessed it and they professed it. They saw better days.
days. But thank God that God has allowed us to live long enough to see the day that God is going to take this ministry and is going to take you personally into the destiny that God has for you. Look at somebody tell them there are better days for you. There are better days for you. That's the reason why the enemy could not hold on to you. That's the reason why sin could not have dominion over you. That's the reason why when the enemy tried to pull you back into bondage, the Holy Ghost stepped in and made a way for you even where there seemed to be no way because I come to tell you we are getting ready to see the promise of God fulfilled in our generation I'm standing on a word that has been prophesied from one generation to the next and I'm holding on that God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent but every promise is in him yes and in him amen I feel the Lord in this place Pharaoh began to be intimidated by the strength of God's people. And he thought, my God, we're in trouble if the enemy ever attacks us. But what he doesn't understand is that at that moment, Israel was perfectly satisfied to be where they were. They wouldn't have joined themselves to the enemy. They would have never allied themselves against the enemies of Egypt. But when man is involved, there's always an intimidation factor of the unknown. And when that unknown begins to raise up, instead of them responding with faith, instead of them stepping out upon the waters, they begin to respond in fear because they cannot understand why God would do something that he's never done before. And that was the same way with the Pharisees. They could not understand why God would use Jesus to open up somebody's eyes when he had never used anybody to do that ever before. You have to understand that we are coming into a new season and a new time and a new moment. God's getting ready to do things that are going to blow your mind. He's getting ready to manifest himself in ways that is beyond our own imagination. God's getting ready to touch your life personally and use you in a magnitude that your mind cannot even begin to fathom at this point. In fact, when God brings you to the place where he's calling you to, you'll have to look back and say, this must have been the Lord because I didn't even know how to ask for this. I didn't have the mind. I didn't have the mental acumen nor did I have the vocabulary to begin to open up my mouth to express the words that would be necessary for this manifestation. Look at just look at somebody near you and tell them it's going to be all God. 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 That's how it's going to come to pass. It's going to be all God. That's how it's going to manifest. It's going to be all God. Oh, I'm so glad to be in his hands. I'm so glad to be in his hands. It's going to be all Jesus this time. Pharaoh began to raise up and oppress God's people, but one thing he found was the more he oppressed them, the stronger they became. Because the enemy doesn't understand. We are emotional, but we don't live on emotion. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's the reason why he can understand that the greater he oppresses you, the harder you pray, the more he attacks you, the harder you worship. Oh, come on, somebody. The more he pushes back against you, the more you study. Why are you doing that? Because I don't live by how I feel. I live by what I know. And I'm standing on the word of God. I don't care what comes today. I don't care what comes tonight. And surely I can care less what comes tomorrow. Because I don't know what tomorrow holds. But I do know who holds tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to stand on his word. Is there anybody with me in this house tonight? Says, Pastor, I'm going to stand on his word. I'm going to stand on his word. When nothing else can hold me up, I'm going to stand. On the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. The more he attacks, the more we pray. The more he oppresses, the stronger we worship. He doesn't understand that we have found that our blessing is in our pressing. It's not in drawing back. The Bible said we are not of those who draw back under perdition, but we are those that believe unto the saving of the soul. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Somebody in here, it's time for you to start pressing. You've given up long enough. You've thrown in the white towel of surrender enough now. Now it's time for you to press ahead. Your future is brighter than your past. Quit living there. It no longer exists. So God in his sovereignty raised up a man by the name 
life of Moses. Hallelujah. The devil tried to kill him. The problem is, is God is the one who sovereignly involves himself in the affairs of man. He said, I am God. Beside me, there is no other. He said, I also declare the end from the beginning, saying my counsel will stand and I will do all my pleasure. And before Moses could be formed in the belly of his mother, God knew that that womb was going to produce a deliverer. I feel the presence of God in here. Yes, it had produced Aaron. And yes, it had produced Miriam. But I'm telling you, there was a deliverance coming from the womb of someone who is in utter captivity. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Don't you think for a moment that because the enemy's got a hold of you, and you've done this, and you've done that, that God has forsaken you. But in God's fullness of his time, he is going to let the womb of your spirit produce a deliverance for you. Jesus said, if you believe on me, as the scripture said, out of your belly, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water springing forth to everlasting life. Look at your neighbor, tell him it's coming out of your belly. It's coming out of your belly. Your freedom's coming out of your belly. Your deliverance coming out of your belly. Your healing's going to come up out of your belly. The word is in you. If the word is in you, it will produce that thing which it is sent to, and it will not return unto him. Lord, I'm telling you, it's in your belly. So God took this woman and produced the deliverer. And Satan tried to kill him. And so death came to all the children, the male children of his age. But the enemy couldn't kill him. Because when God's protective hand is upon the one who has been endowed with the assignment, I don't care what the enemy tries to do, he can't kill him. Oh, I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. See, this is what I love about God, is he doesn't call us based upon present circumstance. He calls us based upon future potential. And that's the reason why when you were a full-blown heathen, acting like a wild man in the, in the earth, God kept protecting you over and over again. A thousand at your right hand, and ten thousand at your left hand, but he didn't come nigh your dwelling. Why? Because there is an assignment on your life that even the enemy can't keep. Look at your neighbor tell him you're called for this. You're just called for this. That's the reason why you made it out. That's the reason why you survived. That's the reason why you are here today. It is not because you are strong. It is not because you are wise. It is not because you are affluent. It is because God assigned something to you. Somebody said, Pastor, how do you know that God's got an assignment on my life? Because you're here. You survived. You got through that thing. I don't know how you made it, but by the grace of God, you are what you... So God produces. Oh, I feel him in here, saints. Oh, hallelujah. God produces this deliverer, protects him. My God in heaven causes him to be raised in the very house of his own enemy, protected in the house of his enemy, provided for in the house of his enemy. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, educated in the house of his enemy, covered in the house of his enemy. Oh, I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. Growing up in the house of his enemy, nurtured in the house of his enemy. Oh, you said, what does that mean for me? That was for you too. Because if the world could have, it would have destroyed you. But God just let you be provided for miraculously. God. Finally, Moses, knowing his heritage, looks at the people of God in utter bondage. And he says, no, sir. No, sir. These are my people. Hallelujah. And the Bible said he would rather suffer affliction with the children of Israel, oh God, than to, than to enjoy the pleasure of sin, even if it was for a season. In other words, he said, I will suffer with you. There's something about God's children who really got a call on their life. They will suffer it out. They'll pray it out. They'll cry it out. Listen, there ain't no running in us. Hallelujah. We ran for long enough. But when the Lord found us, my God wrapped his arm around us. Hallelujah. There's no going back for me. There's no going back for you. I have 
nothing to go back to. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I'd rather suffer with God's people than to enjoy the pleasure of sin anyways. Because it's just for a season. Once the sin has produced the consequences, my joy is over. And I'm suffering now. I'm grieving now. But what I love about the joy of the Lord is even in the most difficult times, it doesn't quit. Even in the most dire circumstances, it doesn't run out. But my God is joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's joy that doesn't make sense to the human mind. So he sees one of the children of Israel being beaten, being mistreated. And he goes over and he takes, hallelujah, the soldier of Egypt and he kills him and buries him. But news gets out. Hallelujah. Moses did not know that this is not the only soldier that is going to die under my watch. God's about to deliver his people. But God said, before I can do that, i got to take you out 40 years into the desert. What you've got to understand is before God could bring Moses to a place that he could deliver his people, hallelujah, he had to go into the desert for 40 years. Before God could take Israel into the land of promise, they had to be in the wilderness. 40 years. You say, what is so important about those 40 years? Because in that 40 years, God's processing Egypt out of you. God's getting Egypt out of you. Before Moses could go back to Egypt, Egypt had to come out of Moses. Hallelujah. Before the Israelites could go into the land of promise, Egypt had to come out of Israel. You say, why? Because if they would not have had that time of transformation, they would have taken Egypt into the promised land. But God said, when you cross the Jordan, you're going in as my people, not Molochs. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're going in as my people, not Ross. You're going in as my chosen people. Hallelujah, not Pharaohs. Hallelujah. That's the reason why you cannot hate the process. Because the process is actually bringing you to the promise. But when you get to the promise, Egypt's got to come out of you. And I feel like God has been taking me through a season over these past 16 years to pull Egypt right up out of me. Because I cannot take my past into my future. I'm not going to hate on it, but I sure can't take it now. There's a new land ahead of us. There's a new destination coming to us. And in order for us to go into that place, yesterday has got to be out of me. I'll take the truth of God's word without hesitation into the future. But I cannot take the methodology, nor can I take the manufactured things of men into the future with me. Those idols have got to be left in the wilderness. God in heaven. Those idols have to be destroyed in the wilderness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So God said, Moses, you go down and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Yeah. And we know the story. My God, through many wonders and signs and miracles, God delivered his people with a strong hand yeah. out from the authority of Pharaoh yeah. and took them, hallelujah, into the wilderness. I know that a lot of times we want God to transport us right out of Egypt into the promised land. But we can never get into the promised land without first going through the process of the wilderness. Ah, hallelujah. Because in the wilderness, some of us have had to trust God. Hallelujah. That when we woke up in the morning, his word would be there still. Many of us have had to trust God that when we woke up in the morning, his mercy would be new. Hallelujah. We could no longer, hallelujah, be breastfed in the lap of those who so easily spoon fed us. But God says, now you're going to have to learn to trust me. Now you're going to have to learn to follow me. And every morning you wake up, you're going to have to trust me for what you need because I'm going to take your idols from you. I'm going to take your gods from you. I'm going to come on. I'm going to take everything that stood in my place away from you because when you go into this new season and this new destination, I don't want you pointing people to your past. I don't want you pointing people to namesakes. I want you to point them to me. Now looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So they get into the wilderness. The moment they step into the wilderness, you would think that would be it. 
You would think that would be it. But see, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost here. You guys won't need this one right here. Hallelujah. When God took them up out of the wilderness, he did it with a, took them into the wilderness, he did it with a strong hand. But then Pharaoh hardens his heart. And God permits Pharaoh to begin to pursue Israel to destroy them. Because there's something you need to understand. That the reason why God has let people turn against you, that you no longer belong there. And some of us, the only way we know that we no longer belong there is if the people that now live there no longer want us there. That's the reason why relationships had to be broken. Because God said, I got to take you on. But if I make it comfortable for you, you're going to go back. But I can't just take you out of the bondage. I also got to let you know that the people that still live there don't want you there anymore. Look at your neighbor tell them, you don't belong there and they don't want you there. Oh, I feel it here. Hallelujah. You don't belong there and they don't want you there. I said, you don't belong there and they don't want you there. That's why they talk about you. That's why they tear you down. That's the reason why they hate on you. That's the reason why they attack you. It is not because God has abandoned you, but God's got to let you know you don't belong there and they don't want you there anyway. God said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stay right there with you all night. Yeah. You're going to come up out of Egypt rejoicing. Yeah. But by the time you hit the Red Sea, you're going to be doubting. But I got to show you immediately that I am there with you. And I'm going to take care of you. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I just tried to figure out, Pastor Jared, why right after I got saved, God was doing so many powerful things for me. And it seems like now those things have trickled down and bottlenecked to just here and there. Because when God first brought you out, he had to do some pretty powerful things to let you know, I am here and I'm going with you and I know how to take care of you. Oh, I feel him in here. Hallelujah. So all night long, all night long, hallelujah. See, some of y'all were used to miracle after miracle after miracle. Manifestation after manifestation after manifestation. And you wonder, is there something wrong with me? This thing slowed down now. I come to tell you it hasn't slowed down. It's just that God has taken you from momentary provision to daily provision. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He provided for you in minutes. But now God wants you to know I'm here today as well. I'll be there tomorrow as well. And he brought them out. And they said, my God. What have you done? You brought us out of Egypt to die right here? He knew they would immediately doubt. Because they had spent now hundreds of years without the need for God. And now God has brought them out. But he's now left them vulnerable. He's left them vulnerable now. Now I'm going to need you, Lord. Before, that's the reason why people don't understand our transition. They don't understand how we can be ripping and running in the world. Come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Seems so strong in the world. So self-confident in the world. And then we come to Jesus and now we're so vulnerable. We're so weak. Because we were trusting in ourselves. But when we come to Jesus, he takes us into a place where we see ourselves. And when we see ourselves, we say, oh, I'm too weak for this. Oh, God, I'm vulnerable now. And the reason why the Lord did that for you is because in vulnerability, you will call upon his name. In weakness, you will look to his strength. He said, I'm going to make you vulnerable now. But I'm going to show you I'm your protector. What Israel was not understanding is that God was loving on them this whole time. Well, how could God love on them by putting them in such a vulnerable position? Because God was trying to show them, I don't care how great Pharaoh is, I'm greater. Amen. I don't care how great your sin is, I'm greater. Because where sin did abound, grace doth much. 
Oh, come on, somebody. I, I don't care how much your heart condemns you. I'm greater. I don't care how much your past calls on you. I'm greater. I don't care how much guilt you have because now you're feeling like somehow I'm tearing away the very thing that made me who I am. Look at your neighbor. Tell him God is greater. God is greater. God is greater. What you have to understand, it wasn't the sin that made you who you were. It wasn't the system that made you who you were. It was God the whole time bringing you into a place where he can mold you. I understand what it feels like to feel like you're being unloyal to something that you are so vested in. But children of God, I'm not vested in a movement. I'm not vested in property. I'm not vested in facilities. And I am not vested in men. Everything that I've done was for the Lord. And facilities will decay. Men will die. But God is forever. That's the reason why he said don't store up your treasure on earth. But rather store up your treasure in heaven. Where moth and rust do not corrupt. Neither can thieves break in and steal. Everything I did was in heaven. Everything I did was for the. So he pulls them out. Parts the Red Sea. Takes them out. My God, he starts letting bread fall from heaven every morning. They're not satisfied with bread. He lets quail come. They're not satisfied with quail. Yeah. And at one point they said, would to God. We could eat the leeks and the onions that are in Egypt. Because you have to understand that's the process of God taking Egypt out of you. Is he provides something for you you couldn't get in Egypt. It doesn't taste like what you're used to. Look at your neighbor, tell them this is an acquired taste. This is an acquired taste. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not going to taste savory up front. In fact, Hannah is on such a demonic diet, the cheese now tastes bad to her. The devil is a liar. I don't want your diet. You keep your diet to yourself because I thank God for cheese. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But the fact of the matter is, when you're eating something that you're not used to eating, it is not savory up front. It can taste awful. It can be even, it can be even bland, but their shoes weren't wearing out. Their clothes weren't wearing out, wearing out. And by the way, wasn't nobody sick either. Right. Hallelujah. Because what God gives you is not for your immediate, uh, uh, for your immediate pleasure. It is what he gives you to sustain you for the journey that you are on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that stuff won't taste like what you had in Egypt. It won't be flavorful like you had in Egypt. Come on, somebody. Oh, Hallelujah. 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 They said, you know what? What to God, we could just go back to Egypt. Because at least there we had mushrooms and onions. At least there we could eat something that was savory. But what they were not doing was being transparently honest with the circumstance that they had in Egypt. And see, I believe that's the reason why God will let a lot of dirt come out of the past. Because we can come out with rose-colored glasses. But sometimes God's got to let you look backward to the filth that was there so that you remember. Remind yourself that yes, we had leeks and onions, but we were also in bondage. That's the reason why God's not going to let sin look appetizing to you anymore. He's going to remind you, yes, you can do what you want, when you want, and how you want it. But I want to remind you that you were strung out. Come on, somebody. I want to remind you that you lost everything. I want to remind you that you had your children taken away from you. I want to remind you that you had an abortion. I want to remind you that you developed an STD. I want to... Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Because I cannot let Egypt look good to you. I got to let it be what it is. And look at your neighbor telling me it is what it is. It is what it is. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You hold on to a movement long enough, God will let the mud swing so that you can say, yes, we had some leeks and onions, but I can't go back there now. I can't return. I can't go back there anymore. Hallelujah. Yes, it was good. I'm not complaining about the goodness of it, but I'm not going back to the bondage.
bondage that I was in because of it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. I'm not going back to somebody dictating my life every step of the way. I'm not going back to somebody telling me how to dress anymore. I'm about tired of being under the hand of man. I want to be in the hand of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, good God in heaven. Hallelujah. The problem is that a lot of people want to stay in denial because of their past. Hallelujah. You'll see people who are abused in their past by family members and they have a rose colored view of it. They say, well, they weren't so bad. They were just misunderstood. So you have to understand they went through this in their past as well. So you have to, you have to give them some space. God's not asking you to try to beautify mud. He made it dirty for a reason. Come on, somebody. He's not trying to get you to dress up the filth. He made it filthy for a reason. Let that is filthy be filthy still. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But let that which is clean be clean. So you can't hate it when God begins to bring up the unlovely. When God begins to bring up the filth, you can't hate it. For some of us, it's the only safety net we have from going backward. It's the only safety net we have. It's the only safety. I'm not getting tied up in all that. No, sir. I can't go back there because I can't get tied up in all that. If God didn't let that happen, if God didn't let that come to the light, you and I may have had opportunity to go back. But thank God for his mercy that if it takes dredging up filth in order for us to despise where we came from so that we never go back to it, then children of God, thank God for his mercy. To let friends come into your life. Hallelujah. And you'll think, oh, this is wonderful. These friends have now returned into my life. But he'll just let them come into your life long enough for you to see yourself yesterday in them. And then go, good God in heaven, I can't go back there. I love you, but I got to go. Thank you for being around me, hallelujah, when you were around me, but goodbye. Because I see way too much of yesterday in you. And I can't stay here because I might go back. I can't go back. I got to cut this thing off. Look at your neighbor. Tell them, cut it off. I don't know if everybody needs that, but somebody needs to hear this tonight. Cut that thing off. You can't keep staying around what you think is okay because it might take you back. Cut it off. When Joshua went into Canaan, my God, he fought for the children of Israel. And God had promised him a mountain. Him and his whole family. After the, so many years of being in the land of promise, Caleb goes to Joshua. He said, Joshua, I have fought for you. I have fought for these people. I've done everything that I can. And I am just as strong today as I was with Moses. Now that we have come into the place of promise, now that we are in a moment of peace, let me leave you and go get my mountain. He looked at him and said, Joshua, give me that mountain. <laughs> This is the reason why, children of God, we can never stagnate looking backward. And we surely cannot spend our life looking downward. We cannot get caught up in the past and we can't get stuck in the present. Because there are great promises that are held out for God's people. Not just in the kingdom, but even in this present world. God wants to use the church so powerfully. He wants to put his anointing on it to the place that the man of station of his wonderful works takes place in our lives wherever we are. But that is going to take some people that say, you know what? I thank God for where I came from, but I can't go back. Now that I think about it, now that I have to resonate on it, now that I have to focus in on it, when I look back, now that God's letting some dirt come to the surface, I look back and I say, oh no, Egypt, it ain't it for me. Look at your neighbor, tell him, Egypt, it ain't it for me. I cannot go back. 
because it ain't in for me. I thank God for how he sustained me there, but God's taken me to something better. And if I go back now, oh God, all I can do is return unto bondage. All I can do is return to the whips and the chains. Oh, are you hearing what I'm saying? If I go back to my sinful life now, all I can go back is to the prison and the yoke that God destroyed a long time ago. I thank God that he sustained me while I was there. I thank God that he had mercy on me while I was there. I thank God that he provided for me while I was there. I thank God that he nurtured me while I was there. But Egypt ain't it for me. I've got a mountain I'm headed toward. I've got a destination that I'm going for here. And Egypt ain't it for me. If I go to Egypt, I have to go back. And the Bible said if they had been mindful of the land from which they came, then would they have had opportunity to return. And I know some of us love our history. Have you ever been around somebody that all they can do is talk about their history? Man, you remember when we were in high school. Man, you remember back in the day. The devil is a liar. No, I don't remember. I'm 40 years old about now. I've been graduated for many years. I don't have my mind in high school anymore because the promise of God that is before me is beyond my 18 year old self. So the glory days are not in my past, but the best is yet to come. There's a mountain for me. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. And when God called me to start this ministry, he promised me some things. I have been wondering, God, why haven't you, why haven't you fulfilled those things which you have promised? But I believe he's telling me tonight because I had to keep you in the wilderness until Egypt got out of you. I had to keep you in the wilderness until I showed it to you in a fashion that would cause you to say Egypt ain't it for me. I'm not going back there. Hallelujah. I've got a destination yet ahead of me. This generation needs to see the power of God. Hallelujah. I wasn't called into the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. I was called into 2021. God brought me into the kingdom for such a time as this. And look at your neighbor tell him, you're here too. You're here too. I didn't come by myself, but you're here too. Now I want you to understand that everybody that came up out of Egypt, except for Joshua and Caleb, and their families died in the wilderness. The only people that got to go into the promised land were those who were 20 years and younger. Because of all those years God spent trying to pull Egypt out of them. They would not let Egypt go. And God said, I tried. 40 years I contended with you in this world. For 40 years, I tried. It's not that I didn't want to deliver you. It's just that you wouldn't let go. And so I got to take people. See, I used to think that my calling was to take the scattered flock of our past and bring them back together. And at one point, it looked like it was going to happen. And God was trying to pull people out. But they wouldn't let go. And so you know what they did? They went right back. Because they would not let go. Because they can't see God could be more glorious in the future. Even though they taught us that the latter rain would be greater than the former. They cannot even believe their own teaching. Because they want to return. They taught us that the glory of the latter house would be greater than that of the former house. But they can't get past Egypt. It's the, it's, it's the confines of bondage that kept them comfortable because they know how to walk in those chains. They know how to bear up under that kind of yoke. They understand how to knead out those bricks. They got it in Egypt. They're, they're satisfied in Egypt, but God's saying, no, 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 child. Now you have to come on with me. And this is not going to be somewhere where somebody's going to be able to hold your hand. You're going to have to hold my hand until I take you where I've got you going. Well, I can't do that. And so I thought this would be my whole purpose. God would cause me to take the scattered of his people and bring them back together. 
and we would have the glory days all over again. But what the Lord has shown me is that I gave them opportunity. Now you say, Brother Jared, that's an awful brash statement. But maybe you all don't know, don't remember Sister Donna's testimony. She said, if they will not come, I will call to the north. I will call to the south. And I will call to the east and west. And I will bring sons and daughters that knew nothing about where Egypt, about Egypt, about where they come, where we come from. Children of God, I remember her standing right back there, about where Sister Connie is, and testifying to that truth. And God brought that back to my spirit. That, son, you did in that moment what I wanted you to do. It is not that you didn't do your job. It is that they would not let go. Because it is more easy to continue in the place of comfort than it is to travel on the waters of trust. It is so much easier to fall back into the complacent place. It doesn't matter if there's no anointing there anymore. It doesn't matter if the glory has left. It doesn't matter if the anointing is not on the preached word anymore. We know how to operate in that system because they think it was the system that made them who they were. But it was the Lord using the system. My God, if God could use them back then, don't you think God can't touch people now and use them today? Are you out of your mind? That's the reason I'm going to tell you, since I don't care who comes into this place. We are not changing who we are because somebody comes into this church. We're not changing our worship and we will not change our response to the word of God because we're trying to make people who are uncomfortable with the place God's taken us comfortable. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. We're going to be who we are. My job now is not to try to regather those who will not go. Yeah. My job now is to call to the north and the south, the east and the west, to call sons and daughters yeah. who have never known the bondage of Egypt, right. who have never known the idolatry of Egypt. Right. God said, I called them out. Three and a half million of them wow. called them out of Egypt, showed himself Mighty, delivered them with a strong hand, provided for them 40 years. And when they got to the Jordan, they went over in the land, they sure did. But because they were tainted by the power of Egypt, 10 of them go over. Say they're giants over there. We can't go over there. Those people, that's just too much for us. In their sight, we are grasshoppers. As we are in our own sight. It was an utter lie. This is the reason why you've got to be careful who you talk to. You've got to be careful who you counsel with. Because a person with the wrong perspective will always give you the reason why you can't, even though God told you you could. It is not because God has lost their power. It is because they are pint-sized in their own eyes. It is a personal issue. It is not a problem with the power of God. Joshua and Caleb said, man, look at that cluster of grapes. Put one on your shoulder. I'll put one on mine. They went over there. And they said, my God, the land flows with milk and honey. And as far as them giants over there, they are bread for us. We're going to eat them up. Praise God's holy name. That is the kind.
kind of people I want to walk with from this moment moving forward. I don't want no negative people around talking about the impossibilities of what God is calling us for the future. I want to get around some Joshua and Caleb's and say, you know what? We are well able to take this land. And by the way, any adversary we will face, we will eat them up. Jesus. Look at your neighbor tell him we'll eat him up. We'll eat him up. By the power of God, we'll eat him up. We will take care of every enemy. And by God, by my God, I'll run through a troop. By my God, I'll leap over a wall. The only two people that came out of Egypt that got to cross over into the promised land were the ones that came back having full assurance that what God had promised, he was able to perform it. We're talking about a great number which no man can number. Well, don't get around them ungodly people. You might get tainted by them. Look at your neighbor. Tell them they're bread for us. <laughs> they're bread for us. They don't even know we're coming, but we're going to eat them up. By the time God gets done with them, we're going to see them baptized in Jesus' name, washed in the blood, and filled with the Holy Ghost. something greater I'm looking for something better somebody said oh we're going to have to not be around brother Jared now that's cool amen just give me some Joshua and Caleb's amen Cord, Dathan and Byron you can be swallowed up in the desert I want some Joshua and Caleb's are you hearing what I'm saying if all you're going to do is make a golden calf die in the desert I'm going over to the promised land and I'm going to go over with some people who will say Egypt ain't it for me if you could see what God had, the problem is we can't see it. But I'm praying as God did for the servant of Elisha that God would open up your eyes and let you see. If you could see what is on the other side of this joy. Woo! The leeks and the onions cannot compare to what God has on the other side of this thing. That's the reason why I'm telling you tonight, Egypt ain't it for me. If you could just let God open your eyes tonight and say, my God, greater is ahead. More power is ahead. Greater anointing is ahead. Greater glory is ahead. Greater reign is ahead. Give me that mouth. Give me that mouth. Lord, give us that mouth. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to tell you spiritually, I'm stronger today than I was 15, 16, 17, and 18 years old preaching. Amen. That young man can't compete with me. Uh -uh. He can't compete with me. He may be better in his body, but he can't compete with me in the spirit. Hallelujah. Because I got more energy today spiritually, saints, than I had back then. And I'm like, Caleb, Lord, I've been after this for a while. I've been fighting for a while. I've been faithful for a long while now. Now, Lord, give me my mountain. Give me my mountain. That thing which you have promised me, give me my mountain. But I need some people full of faith. Say, God, lead me, Lord. And I will follow. Lead me, Lord. And I will go. You have called me. I will answer. Leave me, Lord. I will go. I know it's out on waters. But we won't. We won't try. Because Egypt ain't in for me. I'm not going to drown in Egypt, brother. Hallelujah. That's what they were doing to the sons of the Israelites. They were throwing them into the Nile and drowning. I'm not drowning. I'm not drowning.
not drowning in Egypt. There's a promise ahead of me. And I'm not going to die here. And I'm not going to die. Keep looking back, hoping that we were for the return of days gone by. My God, give me my mountain. You gave them theirs. Now, Lord, give me mine. I want to see the house of God full. And I don't care how savory things were yesterday. I'm not going back. Because Egypt ain't it for me. Hallelujah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell all of us, those that are watching, those that are here, don't fight. Don't fight the future. Fight for it. Don't fight it. Fight for it. Because if you could just see, if you could just peek over this joy and see what God has in store for you, you will never, ever desire to go back again. When the enemy comes knocking at your door, say, hey, man, come on. I know you're in church now and all. But it ain't going to hurt you just to have a good time tonight. Come on. Come on. Just, let's just relive some of our high school. Man, you remember back in high school? You look at them and say, Egypt ain't it for me. Oh, I remember high school all right. And I remember all them good old days we had. And I remember the fallout of every bit of it. Egypt ain't it for me. Egypt ain't it for me. We've got to go on, saints. Some of you need to go on. You keep retying yourself to people that are just assignments of the enemy to draw you back. He's, he's really just concerned about what you might be after all that God has brought you through. After all God's invested in you to bring you to where you are, he is absolutely terrified of what you might become. So he'll bring people into your life and say, come on, man, it won't hurt. Just one, come on, just one time. One more time, it won't hurt. You just look at them dead in the eye and say, Egypt ain't for me. Right. Oh, I remember what. Yeah, you could. Yeah, I'm not saying we didn't have good days in Egypt. I, I'm not saying that God didn't take care of me in Egypt. I'm not saying that I didn't have some fun in Egypt. But after a while, God let me experience the whips and the chains. He brought up all the filth so that I never wanted to return. And then after I finally walked away, all my friends became my foes. They chased me about Egypt. Maybe before tonight you didn't understand why that happened. Why, how could you turn on me like that? Maybe some of y'all can understand, how, how could you turn on me? I, we served God for so many years together. How'd you turn on me like that? Because God wanted you to know that you didn't belong there. And they didn't want you there either. That's why he let them chase you out. That's the reason why he let them attack you. Smear you. Because you don't belong there. Egypt ain't for you. Look at somebody sitting near you and tell them Egypt ain't for you. powerful place that is beyond your imagination. Don't you ever sat get satisfied or settle for the leeks and the onions of Egypt when there is a mountain that flows with milk and honey. It ain't for you. It ain't for you. Feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Feel the power of God in this place. Somebody needs to make a decision to Lord, I'm just going to move forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just going on. Hallelujah. Aren't you so glad that God didn't let you die in the wilderness? Aren't you so glad? He could have. He could have. He could have abandoned you and said, you know what, enough. Forget you. I'm done. But aren't you so glad that he is so patient? And with loving kindness, he has continued to dwell, to, to, to draw you into the wells of salvation. God said, I can't let you die here. I'm going to take you over. 
I'm going to take you over to what I promised you. Now that God has made such exceeding and precious promises to us, it's time for you to let go of some things. It's time for you to let go of some baggage from yesterday. It's time for you to let go of some relationships that God's been trying to cut from you for a long time now. It's time for you to quit believing that yesterday was the best. When tomorrow is going to be better. Are you hearing what I'm saying, saints of God? Don't despise that God has shown you what it was behind the curtain. Because he wanted you to get to the place where you could say, you know what, I got some good things from there, but I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I made some relationships there, but I'm not going back. I saw God do mighty things there. But I'm not going back. Because better is yet ahead of me. Greater is yet ahead, saints of God. Because Egypt ain't for you. There's too much on your life. Too much investment. Too much ability. Too much anointing. Too much testimony. Too much witness of the power of God at work in your life. For you to be bogged down in the desert of doubt, fear, despair, and longing for days gone by. It is time for us to rise up as a church, personally and corporately, and say, Lord, I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you the past is over in you. Old things are made new, surrendered my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. I'm going on. I'm going on. Because yesterday is gone. Another day has come. Now I need the Lord to do something new in my life. Not ever regretting but also, I'm not going to worship at that altar anymore. There's something yet ahead of me. Jehovah Jireh was great. But it's time to go to Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha is wonderful. But it's time to move on to Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom is tremendous, but it is now time to go to Jehovah Nisi. We're going to keep moving forward. And every move forward, God is going to show us something about himself that we've never, ever known before. So I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you that your past is over in you. Old things are made new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. I want us to stand our feet all over this place. I'm telling you, somebody needed this message tonight. You needed this word tonight. Because if the enemy could, he would keep you right where you are. Because he knows that what you're going to be tomorrow is too much for him to handle. What you are right now, he, he, can, he can work with you on this one. But when you reach into the fullness of what God has for you, you are going to be his terror. You are going to be his nightmare. And it's all not together just because of the emotional, the spiritual. It is also because of the testimony that you hold with God. That testimony is too powerful for you to keep shut up behind the walls of fear. Somebody needs to hear you. Somebody needs to know that if God could do that for you, then God can do that for them. The enemy keeps trying to bring in past situations and past relationships, whether they be friendships or love affairs, trying to pull you back because he, he can't afford for you to go forward. But somebody in here needs to make a decision tonight. Lord, I'm going all the way. 
I'm going all the way. I know I'm going to have to cut some things off. It might be painful while I'm doing it, but I'm telling you, I cannot afford to die in this desert. There's too much ahead of me. Lord, give me my mountain. Whatever you've got to take out of me, Lord God, the longing that I have for the leeks and the onions. God, let me just give that to you so that I can move forward. Because I can't spend the rest of my life focused on my past. And I surely can't die here in my present. i got to go on with Jesus. Father God, in the name of the Lord. Oh God, in Jesus' name. I have preached what you have put in my spirit tonight. Somebody in here needs to make a decision, Lord, I'm moving forward. I cannot die in this desert. I can't surrender here. I, can't, I cannot be satisfied. I can't settle for this. Lord, give me my mouth. And if that means that I have to, Lord, cut off some things, if that means I have to look forward instead of always desiring what's behind me, because, Lord, we remember what happened to Lot's wife. When she looked back, Lord, she was no longer a viable entity. But she became a pillar of salt. Not capable of anything. Because she wanted yesterday more than she wanted to be free. Father God, in our spirits, in our hearts, in our minds. Lord, in all of us, God, deliver us, God. From the longing of sin. From the longing, Lord God. Of yesterday. Deliver us, oh God. From wanting to always, Lord God, package everything into the comfortable places where we are accustomed and familiar with. God, help us to stretch ourselves beyond ourselves and to walk out upon the water and trust you to hold us up. For if you promised it, you are also able to perform it. God, this generation needs to know you, Jesus. And we will never do that in the confines of the familiar. We will only do this, Lord, as we tread the waters of trust. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, help us, Lord, to surrender. Help us to surrender to you and move forward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Maybe somebody in here, you just need some extra prayer. You say, Pastor, I just need somebody to pray with you. I got some things that are holding on to me, and I got some things that I'm having a hard time letting go of. But I want to go on into my future. I want everything that God has for me. If that's you and you want some prayer, child of God, just go ahead and come on down to this altar. We'll pray with you. If you need some extra courage, some extra strength to cut some things off of your life that continue to bring you back into the perpetual bond that you find yourself over and over again, you go ahead and come on down here. We're going to pray for you. Don't be afraid. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. You go ahead and come on down here. And we're going to pray because God is more than able. More than able. And every enemy of your past, it is bread for us. It's going to get eat up tonight. And you're going to move forward into the glorious future that God has for you. Hallelujah. This altar is open. Oh, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord.
inner system. Egypt ain't for me. I want to see the promises of God in my life. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Well, we're going to take up our tithes and offering things. My goodness. Hallelujah. Woo. Surely the Lord has spoken to us on this weekend. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Father, we thank you so much. Now, Lord, we come, Lord, to worship you in our giving. Bless those that have to give tonight. Bless them abundantly as you watch over your word to perform it concerning them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, brothers, come. Let's receive the offering of the Lord.
Joy, Brother D. Lewis Smith, for those of you that did not know, his son did pass away, Jay. So we continue to pray for Brother D. Lewis. Kim Rogers, uh, Chuck Bendig, uh, Brother Shane Morris's daughter, we want to continue to pray for her. Uh, Barbara Smith, my mom's niece. Brother Walt, Sister, An Sister Andriana, and Sister Rennie Johnson in Iowa. Woo, feel the presence of God. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Justin, come dismiss us in prayer, brother. Hallelujah. Lord, and I have no doubt in our minds, God, Lord, 